Hello and welcome to another episode of You Made That, the podcast about makers, making, and the things we make. Today we have a special guest with us, uh, Jeff Hornung, and uh, Rebecca DeGroote, as always, will be joining us. And I am Bob Blanford, your temporary host for tonight. Mike DeLalter could not be here. Why don't we start off with uh, Rebecca? Rebecca, tell us a little bit about what you've been working on lately. Hey, um, well, <laughs> uh, Thanksgiving break was amazing, and I, I want to hear all about your Thanksgiving breaks, or at least a little bit of what you guys did during them. Um, but it was so short in the grand scheme of things. I needed more time. I needed probably seven more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> I'm I'm ready for summer. It's it's been a long year, but um, I started out by I think the couple days before Thanksgiving break actually started. I started getting prepped to do more gnomes because I'm, I'm I did another gnome demo mm-hmm. right before the break, and as kind of a prep for that, I was like I got to do more gnomes. So I started practicing, and I think I talked about this on the last episode, and just just to kind of get back into it. And then I posted the picture of the gnome that I did for the demo, and everybody freaked out. And I was like, all right, I got to go do more <laughs> gnomes. So I start doing more gnomes, and then I get carried away, and now I'm like diving into my reserves of walnut and my reserves of like the figured maple so that I can have all the dyed hats. And those things are selling out. It oh, is that's insane. great. And then have you looked on Instagram or Facebook or anywhere on social media anywhere like recently? Because gnomes are everywhere it is a now. a gnome explosion. You're right. I've they seen a are ton of them. all over the place. Yeah. And what's really cool is that most of the people that are posting the gnomes originally saw my gnomes. So... I'm getting tagged all over the Mm -hmm. place and they're mentioning that they got inspired by me. And it's just the coolest feeling to be (laughs) able to share something that I really enjoy. And I have so much fun making them. And then like literally dozens of people are now making their own version of gnomes. Like somebody just posted their own version and he asked my permission, which was really cool. um, If I would mind him making his own kind of spin on the gnomes and Mm -hmm. selling his own version of it and i'm like i don't have these things trademarked which kind of brings us back to a couple episodes (laughs) ago uh i don't have them trademarked i don't have a claim on them people have made them before i got the idea from the fabric gnomes that i had seen like years ago and Mm -hmm. um some other random gnomes that my grandma had i think they're the norwegian gnomes or some other like european style gnome and so yeah, I was like, yeah, sure, go for it. Like, it'd be cool if you tagged me if I am your inspiration, right? Mm-hmm. And he did, and he just posted them today, and they are so cool. The hat, instead of being solid wood, is a hybrid uh, hybrid blank, where just the bottom surface of the blank is the wood, and the rest mm-hmm. of it is like this like, like clear, oh, wow. wispy, dyed resin, and it's just so cool, and I need to figure out what his name is so that I can mm-hmm. put him in the show notes. Um but I, I saw those and I saw a bunch of other people's styles. And so it's like a gnome explosion all over Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> and it's it's just so cool. So I stayed really busy doing gnomes, tons of them, and shipping them all out. And I feel like I spent like just a day packing gnomes and shipping them and getting more orders and <laughs> having like responding to people that want them. And like, what colors do you have? Do you have this? Do you have that? And I was like, uh, I can in a little that is while. Awesome. That <laughs> but is not awesome. right now. Yeah, so it's been awesome. it's been fun with gnomes. I've been playing with my tiny hands a lot lately and making myself laugh. <laughs> any, any videos yet on the tiny hands? Any, uh, any videos? Well, I did do one while I was waiting at a stoplight. I was listening to some music and like jamming out and like rocking out on my. <laughs> Got your little hands up on the steering wheel. On my steering wheel, yeah. I only did it at the stoplight, though. I'm not going to do it while I'm driving. Although I can position my hands around my steering wheel so that it looks like the little baby hands are holding it, but they're really not. And I just need like a, one of those cam- cameras that hang around your neck, and then you know they, <laughs> they like just like the body cam. That's what it's the body cam, yeah, so that yeah. I can kind of look forward and not have to have a third arm holding my camera. But. No. It's have been, you added? It's been a lot of fun. Can, can you hold those up a little higher? Did you add arms to them or? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, oh, okay. It was a sleeve of your shirt. I thought you had added little, uh, you know, made little fabric arms for them. 
There you go. Yeah, no. There you go. But I did go out to Hobby Lobby and I went and got some plaid fabric. So I am going to make them some little um, plaid <laughs> shirt sleeves. They're going to be great. <laughs> You just need to make sure that you have a shirt that matches them. That way, when you do the video or when you're sitting in the car or anything, see, you, it'll, you know, they're your hands. Yeah, I know. I do have a red and white plaid, and I got red and white plaid fabric, but then I cut some of it up and made the dog's bandanas. So I don't have as much of that one anymore. Okay, well, I've gone on long enough. Yeah, Mostly let's... gnomes, lots of relaxing. I did do two 1,000-piece puzzles. Oh my or I God. finished one and then did another one. And I really like puzzles. I love Holy jigsaw smoke. puzzles. But the one the one I've been working on since COVID started, and it's one of those where a lot of it, like probably two thirds of it, is just mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. very, very gradual gradient. Ooh. And so it was nearly impossible. So it took me forever. And then one day I was just like, I got to get this stupid thing done. It's been sitting out for literal months, like almost probably half a year. Mm -hmm. So I got it done. And then I was like, I want to do more puzzles. So the next day I did like a 1000 piece puzzle in a day. It was great. Oh my God. That had to be an insane day. Well, let's, let's Uh, let's move on to Jeff. Jeff, tell us a little bit about what you've been working on lately. Ornaments. I am not making gnomes. Gnomes are are the realm of. They're the so group. last year. So, yeah, it's that's so last year exactly. So I'm I'm staying away from the gnomes at the moment, uh, mostly because I cannot compete with the quality of Rebecca's gnomes. Um, however, I did make a witch head gnome mm-hmm. thing for Halloween, so that was that was my one gnomish claim to fame. Um, yeah, but really I've been cool. working on ornaments. Uh, got my ornaments out sold everything to one customer and it's like hey, oh, you got wow. the ornaments left it's like oh, yeah i'm working on them <laughs> um the, the problem i'm having is um you might not know this bob but i'm a ball turner i don't do a lot of spindle work mm-hmm. most of the time most of the year and i am really struggling to remember how to turn ornaments right now i just it's like how does this go how does this go on the machine how am i supposed to hold it yeah. now now that, that i make these cuts. Go, that muscle memory is going like this instead of like this well the, the muscle memory was there i swear to you i could not remember the process you you have to mount it a certain way to start and you do this and you do that and you do a tenon and then you gotcha. blah 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 hollow out the inside it's like I couldn't remember the process so I've got three of them in the works and every single one was done differently none of them were done correctly Mm -hmm. it's like well this is stupid (laughs) what's wrong with me Uh, so yeah that's that's what I've been I've been fighting with ornaments Mm -hmm. that's what I've been doing with my time here it sounds like you need Uh, a price increase on those ornaments if one person I'm thinking there's going to be there's one there's one drying behind me um, I've been doing some some painting today. I had to I had to retrain myself how to do a drop spindle. Mm-hmm. I, again, this is something that I'm not that great at, simply because I don't do a lot. Um, but I went online and I found uh, I actually found a Cindy Drozda handout image where she goes over the proportions and and had that on the Mm -hmm. screen next to my lathe the entire afternoon as i'm there you know my little (laughs) tongue sticking out trying to use the the spindle gouge and do this and dial in my shape so uh the one behind me i think is probably the best drop spindle for an ornament that i've done ever but i still need a lot of work (laughs) so (laughs) i I can see it in the background over your left shoulder it looks really nice it does yeah I can't quite that, reach it. Wh- what did you do to color the finial? Um, paint, and it's not quite done yet. I'm a, I'm a painter. Um, I paint my wood. I paint the <sighs> pieces that I do. Uh, it's just kind of my thing. Hey, Jeff, what do you do? I paint wood pieces. <laughs> <laughs> um, but <laughs> no, um, a friend of mine made me a, a, a glue up kind of like one of your your skateboard things, but it was just mm-hmm. uh, maple maple ply that he glued together was into a blank. It was Tim, yeah. I, okay. I don't. I don't want to give Tim Wadley too much credit on a, on a podcast like this, Tim. If you're listening, I'm not talking about you. He probably um, is. He, he gives probably me most is. of my dad jokes. <laughs> I, I I wrote some down, so I'm ready. Oh, good. Um, awesome. Yeah, I re- I remember from last time. Anyway, so he gave me uh, he gave me a couple of blanks, and I've, I've been messing with them. So I did uh, just a blue dye on the body, so that you can see uh, the 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 lamination of the wood, the glue up the whole bit. Um, and then for my uh, drop spindle and cap, I'm just doing an acrylic paint on it because that's how I prefer to do mm-hmm. those things. So it's a blue ornament body, and right now it's got a white base coat, white base coat. But I'm going to do a white pearl on top to get the to get the finish that I want. 
And then what so do you put after you paint it and the paint dries? Do you put anything over it to protect the paint or just pretty well buff it up with the paint and that's it? Oh, no, I'll do a spray gloss lacquer. Okay, always. spray gloss. Okay, I was curious spray about that. Yeah, spray gloss lacquer, and then I will, uh, uh, I was a retail florist for 24 years, mm-hmm. so the last thing that I do is put a fancy custom bow on top. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, <laughs> that may be the one thing that makes somebody buy every one of them, you know? Uh, I think I think that's what it is. It's not the quality it's of the turning, touch. it's the fact that I, I have that ribbon work on top. It's here. that extra, t- you, you, you tie a nice ribbon, yeah. <laughs> I, I do. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so I, I do have a question about that because I have somebody who wants kind of a, I think he, he said it's kind of a Scandinavian style tree where it's all white and red and everything is very, very white and very, very red. And so he wants those for me. And I have maple uh, finials. That is my kind of general finial wood. Is it just a regular acrylic paint? That you're using? Uh, the base coat, the base coat, yes, the base coat is just a regular white acrylic, um, but I'm doing a, a white pearl on top. I tried to do the white pearl by itself, mm-hmm. uh, but it was it was too translucent, and uh, I, I realized I really did need that, that base coat um, in order to make it look mm-hmm. decently. Uh, but um, metal, metal Masters, Modern Masters, Modern Masters Metal Paint Company, you know what mm-hmm. I'm talking about? Uh, they do the reactive metallic paints. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. If you go to uh, Hobby Lobby or possibly even Michael's, they also sell acrylic paints. They're satin finish, but they've got these pearl colors. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I picked up, I've got a black that I absolutely love. It's like a creamy black pearl type color. Um, I'm going to use the white pearl on top of my white base coat. Uh, there's a there's a gold that I have that I'm going to experiment on my next ornament. And... Um, mm-hmm couple of oranges, a couple of rusts. There's a couple uh, copper out there. There's a green, a green and a blue that I used on some spheres in an art project that I did for the gallery two months ago. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and really cool stuff. It just uh, happened mm-hmm. to be walking through Hobby Lobby one day. It's like, that looks like the, the Modern Masters label. Oh my gosh, it is. The Modern <laughs> Masters. They make <laughs> colors? What? It's not metallic paint? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, really good stuff though. So yeah, I'm kind of, kind of jazzed about that. Yeah. And that's, that's what I've been using. So I'm always oh, amazed awesome. when I go to Hobby Lobby at some of the stuff that they carry that you would not expect them to carry. They, yeah. they have some pretty good stuff. Yeah. Well, oh, for I, me, I get lost in there. I was going <laughs> to, sorry. Go on. I was going to say for me, there, there, there's been, I have been working my little fanny off all over. I, I actually had 10 days off work. Um, so I basically redid my daughter's room. Uh, we patched all the holes in the walls, uh, painted the bathroom, painted the bedroom. Uh, I ma- I put crown molding up. It really looks nice. All that's left is to hang the curtain rod and a few pictures and I'll be finished with it. And I'm, I honest, honest to God, glad to say that it's almost done because it's wore this old man out. Um, and I, and when it comes to the shop, I have not been in my shop and, by saying that, and I haven't been in my shop now since probably, it's been about four or five months, and that leads me into today's topic, which is, yeah, a nice little segue. It's always good yeah, to have a guy was. who does nothing on the podcast. That was, that was smooth. I <laughs> did you, not see you. this coming. <laughs> smooth as Texas roadhouse <laughs> butter, as Michael says. That's um, <laughs> but, um, you know, the topic today is uh, motivation and how to get yourself out of a rut and get yourself motivated. And I'm really hoping by the end of the show, you know, that, um, that I'll feel a little better or a little more interested in going out and uh, spending some time in my shop because I just haven't had that, just haven't had that desire lately. And I've got a nice shop. It's just, eh, you know. Yeah. So, so I, I don't know. Who wants to kick off and talk about what what gets you motivated? What when you're in a rut and don't feel like really just you just don't even want to get out there and do it. You just want to do anything but. What does it take to get you motivated to basically get out in your shop and start doing anything? Jeff, do you want to start? Yeah, I can start. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> for me, um, it's it, it's usually my wife. My wife says, "Jeffrey, go out in your shop and do something," get, and that motivates me. Get out of my her. house. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, let me turn around and make sure she's not uh, oh, yeah. glaring at me from the hall. It's like, oh, hi, honey. Um, no, she's not glaring at me from the hallway yet, but I'm sure that, I'm, I'm sure we will have a talk to later. Um, no. Uh, okay, honestly, sometimes that is the motivation that somebody needs to say, get your butt out there. Mm-hmm. And, and Okay, she's in the, in the doorway now, glaring, so <laughs> I, I consider myself glared at. Uh, but really, sometimes having somebody tell you, mm-hmm. go outside and do something. You're driving me insane. Uh, sometimes that really is the motivation that, that you need to go out and do it. Mm-hmm. That You don't want to do it yourself, but if somebody tells you mm-hmm. to go out, just go out and do something. Sometimes that's enough. Um, I think for me, though, uh, when I get into a rut, it's usually after... Um, I just finished pushing really hard to finish something. Um, and the last the last go round was was uh, I had a, a gallery exhibit that I needed to finish up some work for. Um, it was it was supposed to happen early in the year, but because of COVID, it was kicked from March to May to July to August to October. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when we finally got to October, you know, I, I, I had my initial round of pieces, but I, I wanted to do more. I wanted to draw from my, my COVID lockdown time, and I spent a lot of time in my shop working on that over the summer. Mm-hmm. And and you, you, in order to do some of these more creative pieces, the conceptual type things, not just round and brown, um, it takes a lot of creative energy. And I fi- found that after I would work on something big and complex for a while, I would I would run out of motivation, basically. I just like, I, I don't know what I want to do. I don't want to do anything. Eh, it's just mm-hmm. not happening. Mm-hmm. And, and the best way to get back into the groove for me is to just go out there and do something that is 100% focused on the basics. Rolling it all back, mm-hmm. just going, where did you mm-hmm. start? And for me, it was either pen work or basic bowls. And uh, and and this is where the wife comes in. She says, just go out and do something. Well, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to go out, I'm going to grab something simple. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But that's usually the en- enough motivation to get me to then mm-hmm. get back into the creative <clears throat> process. And uh, by focusing on those, those really basic techniques, um, the step-by-step, line and wrote, uh, you know, do a do a basic bowl round and brown, make a nice tenon and and do a nice shape and a nice rim and make it nice and functional. Mm-hmm. Something that you can put ice cream in later. That's always a good. That's always well, a good thing to help good, yeah. with the creative process. It's like, and eh, when I'm done, I'm gonna go have ice cream, yeah, because um, I've got this great bowl that I can do that with. But once you start on that, if at least for me, it seems like I get going and and I'm just I'm just focused on the tool and I'm focused on the cuts or I'm focused on the bevel. Uh, focus on the quality of the shavings. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, I'm about six pieces into it. I'm having a great time. You know, the, mm-hmm. the tunes have usually come back on by then. Right. The brain starts working. You know that I'm 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 doing more muscle memory type work, but that's allowing the back part of the brain to process and think mm-hmm. and create. And I get some really good new ideas when I'm not trying to work on really good new ideas, when I'm trying to work on uh, on basic things, things that I don't right. have to spend a lot of time thinking about. So mm-hmm. for me, when I'm when I'm struggling, always back to the basics, and that, that usually gets mm-hmm. me back on track. I think that's good advice, you know, but I, I wonder if you're often like me, Jeff, in that, you know, as, as I look around your shop, I see your paintbrushes. I know you're a painter. You've done floral work, so you've done a lot of design there, putting putting arrangements together. You have obviously many other hobbies besides wood turning, and I you do not. No, uh, really? the paint is for wood turning, and, wow, and the grid, okay. the ribbon work. Now, you know, wow. as a retail florist for twenty four years, mm-hmm. I, I stopped that. I do. I'm a full time wood turner. Oh wow! Um, but I find my, I honestly, I find my own hobbies within wood turning. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I started a new hobby over the COVID break and uh, got into segmenting work, okay. and and I'm just absolutely loving it. Uh, because it's completely different. It was it was really scary, and I never I never really took the time to try mm-hmm. it to see if I would even like it. And uh, it, I think back in April is when I made my first piece, and uh, absolutely fell in love with the process. So yeah, okay. I, I do regular wood turning during the day, and then when I need 
hobby time. Mm-hmm. Now I'm working on segment work. So yeah, uh, pretty much everything I do, I, I do a little drawing. I do a little, uh, some other, you know, minor creative stuff depending on, mm-hmm. on the mood, but I'm, I'm primarily a woodworking artist of <clears> some <throat> sort. Mm-hmm. See, I, I never, I never just do nothing. I've got to constantly be doing something. I got to constantly be working, yeah. constantly be moving. And, but I have many other hobbies that I enjoy and I think sometimes I use those as a crutch or an excuse, you know, when I just don't feel like going out in the shop instead of getting off my butt. And like you said, just getting out there and start cleaning up the bench, start turning something yeah. simple. I turn to another hobby that at the moment seems like just a tiny bit more interesting. And and that's what's been happening to me is I've got a couple other hobbies that I've been really focusing on and uh, really enjoying but it has been keeping me from the wood shop because all of my time has been going toward those hobbies. And then, of course, I, I've been trying to be be a, a decent husband and take care of some of the honeydews that I've let kind of fall by the wayside when I was out of town. And, you know, and, and I'm trying to pick those back up, but you kind of got to do those first. And um, for me, I'm hoping I, a couple of guys got together and bought me a new tool. Uh, the other day, a, a tool shows up. I get this Carter and Son um, tool handle and a one-inch Carter and Son skew. Uh, <laughs> the, oh my God, that thing is gorgeous! <laughs> and I think these guys, and I'm going to say their names. It's Tommy Stridham and, and, and Eddie Stipe, and they got together and bought this for me and sent it to me. And I think the the, the uh, ulterior motive is, you know, he's got this shiny new tool. He's going to want to get out there and use it. And to be quite <laughs> honest with you, <laughs> you know. It's, it's kind of working because I'm, I'm kind of thinking I want to get out there and I want, I have heard so much about the steel they use and how, how it stays sharp and how it makes such a nice cut and the weighted handle. So I'm, I'm starting to get the bug for just wanting to play with the tool. So I'm just thinking, chuck up a piece of wood and just like, you know, round it out, which is what you're saying. Get back to the basics, you know, just make it round, you know, and start making a shape. So I'm hoping that this is going to be motivation to get me out there. And plus Mike DeLalter's part of this. He sent, he's got, I've got a blank on the way from Mike that uh, I need to turn for a guy. So, uh, and I think that'll probably be the first thing I turn with this new tool. So should be here tomorrow. Mm-hmm. What about you, exciting. Rebecca? Uh, well, <clears throat> as, as I, I don't want to sound too pretentious about this because I know it's how it's going to come off. Yeah, but, but go ahead and do it anyway. Okay. As, <laughs> as a creative type we kind of have a roller coaster of a life and a roller coaster of the way our mind works. And it's like you have your super high ups and our very low lows. And most of us have a lot of ADD and issues <laughs> focusing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um but I think it's it's very common in the creative type people, and I'm trying to say that in a way that really doesn't make it sound too bad, <laughs> or too like like yes, we must create the art. But no, it's but we really have to. It's one of those things that drives yeah. us, and it's it's a need, it's a desire. But there are some days where you just don't want to do anything, mm-hmm. and those are the days with those low lows, and sometimes they take a little while to get out of it. And so some of the things that I do and like um, I get into those low points when I get really overwhelmed with school and there's just too much on my mind. And like right now, I I texted Henry today and I was like, I'm either going to have an hour or so of turning before the podcast tonight or I'm going to sit down and have a few drinks and watch something stupid on TV (laughs) because there is something I need to get out of my head and get away from what I'm focused on right now. And all it is at school is stress. So it's like, I either have to force myself in there and just do what I know I'm going to enjoy, or I'm just gonna be miserable. Mm -hmm. So it is that like, just forcing yourself out there to do something simple. And so when I got home, there was still part of a part of a gnome body on the lathe. I finished that up real quick and did another one, just the small ones, like an inch in Mm -hmm. diameter or so. And then I threw a little curly maple uh, spindle on there and I did um, just one hat. And I remember somebody in my messages asked for a small purple gnome. And so I dyed it purple. That's why my fingers are all purple too. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, 
I had to force myself to do it today because mm-hmm. I am still, I'm exhausted. I'm mentally overwhelmed. I, I don't really have a reason to do it right now because like I keep selling the gnomes that I have. I could just sell out and call it a day and not do any more for the rest of the year. But again, if it, the alternative was going to be not as healthy and <laughs> not anywhere near as productive. And I have that maker guilt that goes along with not doing things too. And if I were to just sit down on the couch and even if I were cuddled up with my dogs and we were just going to have like a movie day before Henry got home, I wouldn't, I would have had like the biggest guilt trip for myself. Mm -hmm. They're just like, you didn't make anything today. What are you doing? What are you thinking? You're not doing lesson planning, but you're not making anything either. And I'm left with that. And it's the, it's the knowledge that I'm going to feel that way if I don't do something that kind of pushes me even into the shop, even if it's just for like 20, 30 minutes. Um, but those are just my own Mm -hmm. mental issues. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> dealing dealing with getting out of a rut or making myself go to the shop. But other things that help me are um, if I really don't want to be out there or I, if I can't think of anything that I want to make, I'll go out there and I'll start organizing and I'll start mm-hmm. cleaning things up and tidying up and just sweeping up the lathe room and making it look nice and going in with the shop vac and vacuuming up all of the shavings from all over the floor and really making it a space that I want to be in again, that helps tremendously. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes it just gets me an organized mm-hmm. shop. It doesn't actually help me out of my rut. Other times I'll ask it, I'll ask around or I'll look at other people's posts and see if there are any challenges going on because as a highly competitive individual, <laughs> I like to be part of a challenge, especially mm-hmm. if there's some sort of reward at the end other than just like attaboy (laughs) um and you know i i like i like to win things but i also just like to be part of things you know like Mm -hmm. (laughs) obviously everybody likes winning stuff and uh jeff by the way i'm super excited that my name was drawn for your drawing and i finally found someone to give the dvd and the yorkshire grit to so thank you oh good you're welcome (laughs) He was very appreciative. Um, oh, good. But yeah, just being part of the community mm-hmm. and finding ways in. <clears throat> I did pose a question to the the internet as a whole a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago, I think, that if anybody is doing any challenges or wants to do some sort of maker challenge, and I got the strangest responses having nothing to do with challenges, nothing to do with them at all. I don't understand what they saw in my text, but... Um, I need somebody to put out a challenge and say that I can't do something because that will kick me right in the butt and make me go out and prove them wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Do, do do I need to do that now? Do I need to do that here? Well, I are you so, going to play along uh, the too? Gauntlet, the gauntlet has um, been thrown well, down. Well, yeah. Um, my new hobby that we just discussed. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you ready? I um, guarantee you oh gosh. this will be a be, challenge. Am I going to be segmenting? <laughs> um, if, 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 if you accept, <laughs> you said you wanted a challenge, there you go. Mm-hmm. Um, but the way, I, the way I see it, really, if I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> Did you have a special <laughs> like, slang hey, that you use for that, Jeff? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. I, rely, I rely heavily on software mm-hmm. and jigs. jigs. Um, I am not a precision guy. Uh, I am not known for my math skills. Mm-hmm. I'm also not known for driving directions, but that's a completely that's a different, different story. show. <laughs> yeah, when, when you have that show, have me on as your guest. Do, do you get lost often using GPS? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> it just it just is what it is. Um, but I'm, I've never been really comfortable with numbers and math and geometry and things of that nature. Um, and uh, that, that was one of the real reasons why not going into segmenting was kind of what I was doing. And uh, once I realized that, that there is uh, there are all sorts of jigs that you can purchase, I don't even have to make them. If you like making jigs, mm-hmm. go ahead and make them. If you don't like making jigs like me, you don't have mm-hmm. to make them. You can buy them from people who like making jigs, and it's awesome. And um, your, your table saw needs to be of a size that you can utilize the jigs. That, that really is helpful. Um, but once once you figure out how to dial in the jigs, and there's jig setters 
for your your jig cutting things and um, but all I have to do is not screw up and uh, glue the stuff together and and line up my little patterns but I can do all of my designing with software mm-hmm. I, I don't have to do slide rules and 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 tape measures and graph paper or anything I can just I can just sit at the computer and clicky 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 and make really cool designs and have the the software tell me all of my angles and cut lengths and yeah. whatnot and then I go into the shop and I set up my jigs and I make these really nice mm-hmm. pieces and then I, and then I glue them together and uh, it's fascinating it is technical um, but if you want to challenge my dare mm-hmm. there you go and it, it's, it's <laughs> I also, challenge you to learn how to segment it's also a super <laughs> smooth and easy turn once you're done because if, if you align your grain the same direction you're constantly cutting with the grain and it it mm-hmm. really is nice to turn isn't it when you do a segmenting it's nice to turn, but if your ring thickness is not <laughs> right, and I've researched this thoroughly, um, I, I'm not skilled enough to go with minimal wood. I need lots and lots of wood on, on the inside, and um, I, it's it's got more to do with, uh, with your mindset, uh, that you have to plan everything from the beginning. Um, Design changes midstream really doesn't work well with segmenting because <laughs> you don't have a lot of material no matter what you do. But if you are if you are trying to be uh, stingy with the wood on some of your rings, that's mm-hmm. really going to limit what you can do. And if mm-hmm. you don't if you don't realize that early enough in the project, it, it can really screw mm-hmm. you up. So on, on I've got a couple of my on my test pieces that the outside shape is really nice and really smooth. But I've got hard corners on the inside because I did not have enough wood to make a nice smooth transition. Oh, okay. And this people are like, hey, I want to buy that. It's like, no, that's not for sale. And, and it's not because I want to keep it. It's because it, it's terrible. And uh, But that's part of the learning curve. So, yeah, on some levels, the act of cutting is nicer than mm-hmm. a lot of other processes. But if you don't have enough material, it becomes a whole different conversation as well. Have yeah. you done any of the open segmenting where, where you've got gaps between your your ring pieces? Have you I, tried? Do, I have not, uh, but that is next. I, nice. I realized I was going to start it <clears throat> on my last project and realized that I actually did not have the right jig plate for that mm-hmm. process. Um, that there's a couple of ways to do that. You can You can buy these plates. And just uh, sh- basically shove your segments into the plates, and uh, that the plate will allow you to line things up with gaps okay. in every ring. Um, and that's that's kind of the easier way to do it. You're going to be limited in how many segments you can do. It's going to be very restrictive, but you can definitely do it. And that's where I'm going to start. Uh, but you can also buy or build a much more elaborate jig to line these things up with the gaps and mm-hmm. and the guys that are doing the. 2000 piece oh, those are uh, segment oh, open segment flower bowl mm-hmm. things it's like i want to get there yeah i just got a ways to go <laughs> and, but that's that's what they're doing it's like one block at a uh, time yeah. and very precise very very fiddly i i don't know if my attention span will allow me to <laughs> See, do this and that's, but it, it, it looks cool that's not going to motivate me to get in the shop at all <laughs> No, no, back to basics for you, sir. Back to basics for you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, that sounds... The, <clears throat> how tedious that sounds is mm-hmm. almost as tedious as, like, the Basket Illusion painting. Although that sounds like a lot of fun. I. It's I not think as that tedious as the Basket Illusion. No? See, I've done... I've, I've, I've done a basket illusion pendant, just a pendant. It was like maybe two inches across, and I want so badly to do more. Oh, there's an intruder. <laughs> oh, oh, security to deck three. <laughs> it's just Henry. Um, but I want to do that so bad. But I think that's another thing that gets me out of ruts is just trying, finding new things to try. Because yeah. I want to try new things all the time. I want to keep learning. I want to keep expanding my knowledge base and growing from that and doing new things. And then also collaborations. Um, I've got three collaborations in the works. None of them are done. None of them are close to done. But it motivates me if I am just sitting there on my butt 
to do something with my time because again with the guilt (laughs) Uh, those other people are now waiting on me too so i gotta actually do those things to keep up with what is expected from them it seems like the stress though that that honestly that would just turn me off and make me want to push farther away of having to do something you know i want to go out and do something because i want to do it right like jeff wants Mm -hmm. to go out and segment he's enjoying that me, I, I don't want to have to do anything. I, I have to go to work every day and I have to work at my job. When I come home, I just want to relax and do what I want to do. So I, I try to steer clear of the challenges and, and the collaborations and things like that just because I don't want to put myself under that, that level of pressure. It, it's well, no, it takes the fun out of it. For me, for it, me, it does. Not everybody. It doesn't take the fun out of it, out of it for me. It makes it more fun. It gives me mm-hmm. a a bigger reason to go out there because there's always a reason for me to go out there. I enjoy it. I'm constantly mm-hmm. enjoying my time in the space. It's just it's hard sometimes for me to find motivation to go out there. And once I'm out there, I'm enjoying every second of it mm-hmm. until I hurt myself. Um and <laughs> but you know, it's Sometimes it's just difficult getting myself into the space. And, you know, sometimes it's just something as simple as I don't want to change out of my work clothes into, well, my my school work clothes into my shop work clothes and then have to take a shower in the evening and then change again. And I'm like, it's sometimes it's just life is just hard. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Wait, we're supposed to change? Well, I mean, when you... I guess, you know. <laughs> I know. I, I get in trouble for that all the time, Jeff. What are you doing out here in your work, your work clothes? Uh, it's like all of my clothes are work clothes. It's like there's a couple of things that I haven't well, ruined yet, but they, they will get ruined at some point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like this work clothes right here, guys. Um, we're wearing them. That's, that, that's a wood chip right there. Hey, I probably got that's wood man chips glitter. on me, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. I wore that shirt yesterday. We we went out, so I put on my fancy man glitter shirt. <laughs> anyway, um, but to what Rebecca was saying, actually, to what to what both of you were saying, um, I think a lot of creatives, and I, I, I because I teach uh, wood turning at an art school here in St. Louis, I come in contact with a lot of people that are absolute makers and creatives. And, and a lot of these people are, are kind of along the same lines as Rebecca and myself, where we, we almost require a challenge mm-hmm. or something that, that forces us to main, maintain engagement. And I think that's why uh, I'm thriving with segmenting right now is because it came at a time when I was dealing with all of the fallout from having over three quarters of my work year canceled mm-hmm. due to the mm-hmm. COVID situation and uh, t- trying to find a way to deal with that by, by taking on something that, that forces this challenge for me was really helpful in in getting mm-hmm. back on the horse and and finding some motivate motivation mm-hmm. but like i said earlier and sometimes that simply needed to manifest itself by doing a basic bolt mm-hmm. just a round and brown nothing muffin focus on the cuts and that's it mm-hmm. and that helped me get back into the creative stuff again okay mm-hmm. you know you talk you talk about learning new things and experimenting um one thing you can do and i don't know if uh well, I'm just going to mention this. You could actually do a little carving on your pieces. And we have a very gracious sponsor, uh, Sabretooth. And I would like for Rebecca to take just a moment and tell us a little about our sponsor. And those of you who are looking for a new challenge, think about maybe using some Sabretooth burrs to enhance one of your turnings. Yeah, well, um, our sponsor, Sabretooth, you can find them at sabretooth.com. And if you do end up finding some of their amazing burrs and carvers that you can't live without, you can use uh, YMT at checkout to save 10% off your entire online purchase. Um, Great timing because, you know, if you go on there now, you know a carver in your life, you want to start carving, you want to gift some burrs to a friend for Christmas. They make great stocking stuffers, as we have mentioned before. Just, you know, make sure you don't take them out of the package because I wouldn't want to shove my hand into a stocking and find a burr. (laughs) Um, (laughs) 
No, I would. You know, well, I mean, I would, but not as aggressively as I plastic. would dive into a stocking. You know, you yeah. know, keep keep it in the plastic. Wrap it up a little bit first, and then it'd be like, ooh, look at that. Um, they come in all sorts of awesome colors. You know, I'm I'm partial to the green. I like the green, and uh, yeah, great company. I think we forgot to put them into the last couple episodes. That might have been my fault. It might have been ADD in general. <laughs> I think I think the last couple of episodes we really got off the rails, and 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 I do apologize to Sabretooth for that because <laughs> they've been very gracious with us, and uh, mm-hmm. and I do appreciate them and everything they do for the show. Yeah, yeah, and and speaking of that too is. Um, Sometimes I just want to get out and carve. Sometimes I don't care what I'm actually mm-hmm. making. I just go cut a piece of wood on the bandsaw and then just start carving it and see what happens. And it's that sort of exploration and discovery. And it's <clears throat> I can take an idea from idea in my head to rough form in a matter of minutes with these birds. So it's it's really cool. I, I want to see if... Um, I want to hear about what Mike has done with his carver. Mm-hmm. I know he needs some tab- he needs some saber tooth burrs, um, but I know he got his carver set up recently and he was going to start playing with it. But I I haven't heard has he done anything with that yet? I have not heard either. I do not know. <sighs> Michael, do, does he know that if you use YMT at checkout, he'll get ten percent off his entire purchase? I mean, he definitely <laughs> can if he goes to sabertooth.com. <laughs> I think he needs to go to Sabretooth.com. I do as well. I do as well. Dasha, if you happen to be listening to this, Michael would like some burrs. If you need a little information on which ones, give Rebecca a call. She'll help you yeah. point you in the right direction. I sure will. I'll take a whole video of my Sabretooth carving burr tree. It's going to be great. I should put lights on it for Christmas. Oh, there you go. There ah. you go. <laughs> and, and do a little hand video with the burrs, right? Yes. <gasps> yes. Okay, I just smacked my microphone, so I'm sorry for any weird sounds that that just made. Well, I, I, uh, I just, I just wanted to make sure that we had a chance to, uh, to, you know, plug Sabretooth because uh, they've been wonderful to us, and uh, we definitely appreciate them. Thank you so much. Um, mm-hmm. it, anybody else have any other either either of you have any other ideas for uh, getting motivated? I mean, we've talked about a lot of different different things here, but um, beyond challenges and beyond you know going back to basics, anything else that motivates you? Um, watching watching other videos or not watching other yeah. videos, watching you know anything like that. I was I was actually just getting ready to mention that that with the with the uh, huge influx of the live remote demos uh, mm-hmm. across all industries everywhere, but specifically in the wood turning world, that there are, um, because I'm not on the road or I'm not at the school constantly teaching myself, I've actually had some time to catch up on some of my own video watching. And, and I've been able to see some really cool people do some really cool stuff. And, and maybe maybe I won't go out and do this particular project or that particular project, but it doesn't seem to matter what I watch. I'm always picking up something Mm -hmm. and and maybe maybe it's just you know that's really cool but i don't think i ever want to pursue that Uh, but a lot of times it's you know that's really cool but now i've got an idea Mm -hmm. and maybe i'm going to go out in my shop when i'm done here and and pursue that thought so watching other people with the uh, enough of an open mind to maybe not plan on on copying i guess or or going out and reproducing whatever they did but to sit there with an open mind and, and maybe you'll come up with something you know along the same lines based on what you just watched and, and sometimes that is a good way for for me to get back out into the shop with something new and exciting to try uh one yeah i saw a video and i want to try to make one of those mm-hmm. because that's what they were teaching but two i saw a video and it gave me a great idea mm-hmm. and i need to go out and, and try whatever okay yeah or a new technique maybe you see a technique you want to try and Mm -hmm. not necessarily make the same thing but yeah i I agree um watching videos has been a huge source of inspiration for me in the past and uh you know perhaps that's something i need to do is is go back and just not only think about basics but start checking out a few videos because i haven't i haven't watched many turning videos recently what i haven't i haven't i i've got believe it or not <laughs> i've got i've got the best audience in the world because uh, i had mentioned one time that i'd like to buy a car and start rebuilding an old car 
and I have been getting <laughs> messages from people finding cars in their area that are the vintage and the model that I'm looking for. So, <laughs> so yeah, so they talk about a great audience and that, that, that'll really motivate you. And, and that's the thing for me is, and I wanted to mention this earlier, you brought up the guilt, Rebecca, you feel guilty if you're not doing something. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily feel guilty if I'm not turning because I can go do something else that I really love to do and you forget about the guilt, but I feel guilty for the people who my audience who are so generous and are so wonderful and, and really lo- they look forward to coming to your videos like a, you know, a weekly show or whatever you might watch on, you know, a network comedy or whatever. And um, I feel guilty because I'm not doing things for them. And that's mm-hmm. the part that drags me down and it makes me feel even worse. I get it, it drags me deeper into that rut. I think, you know, that because I'm worried about my audience and, and I love mm-hmm. the people that watch my videos that I, I get the best interaction. I got a great, I got a great, uh, a great group of people that watch me. Yeah, that's awesome. It's awesome to have that support. And I find a lot of that also in just the maker community as a whole mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. just people that want to support you and want to make you do better and like go further. And they want to push you to succeed, even if it mm-hmm. is just like a good job, keep it up. And, yeah. Or here's how I can help you. Or you mentioned this one tiny little thing. I <laughs> have like three of them. How do I get this one to you? Mm-hmm. And yeah. It, yeah. And it, it's, it's, you like just kinda, ki- it's like you your kids. It's like your kids go out there. I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, well, no, it, it's it's like I'm like their kid because my successes are their successes. When I do something and it's yeah. a success, they revel in it sometimes more than I do and enjoy it maybe more than I do uh, because they mm-hmm. really look forward to watching you do something and watching you do something well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're, well, and I mean, that's why I'm. Like... Go on. Oh, I was just going to say, and that he he said watching you and watching you do something well, and I was going to say, and that's why I'm currently not broadcasting my ornament turning live because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing something well right now yet. I use that I use that phrase very loosely, Jeff, very loosely. <laughs> I, I am the first to admit, you know, I had somebody make a comment one time about, oh, you know, you're a great. I'm like, you know, I'm not a great turner. I'm a hack. I'm just great at presenting my hacking right <laughs> I, yeah I, you, you find really cool stuff hiding in wood but you do it in a very a very presentable yeah manner. exactly exactly <laughs> mm-hmm. so <laughs> how long we've been at this tonight guys i, I hadn't been watching the clock we'll have a uh, two hour video. great question close to an hour close to an hour well then maybe we ought to start reining this back in and uh telling a few dad jokes and i think i, I let ladies go first earlier tonight so i'm going to let our guest host go first tonight jeff would you like to grace us with one of your dad jokes absolutely um all right so how come you never see an elephant hiding in a tree <laughs> Why? because they're <laughs> i know this one it's awesome because they're so good at it <laughs> I almost blurted out the punchline and I had to stop myself. I was about to say, because they're just that good at it. Yeah. They're, they're just that good. That's why. Oh. But I'm dumped. <laughs> I got another one if you need it. Yes, we do. <laughs> All right. Um, if you're out and about and you see a robbery happening at an Apple store, what does that make you? Hmm. I don't know. And I the letter I witness. Ah, I win, uh, I win. iPhone, <laughs> iPad, iPod, I yeah. witness. Okay, okay, I got you. Good one. <laughs> womp womp. Womp womp. Okay, uh, Rebecca, what? we're ready for you. Okay, this one's from Tim. Tim Wadley. <laughs> of course. Like I said, he, he gives me so many dad jokes. It's great, <laughs> but he finds them in the same place that I do, so it's all right. What part of the hospital has the least privacy? The ICU. The ICU. <laughs> <laughs> Same place you go if you have a peekaboo accident, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know our top you. we talked we talked <laughs> Not the little hands. Oh little, my the god. Little hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh Rebecca. <laughs> that is Yeah, you should do a so video cast one of these times. <laughs> oh, one of uh, the, 
Sorry, I, I have a joke to feed off of Jeff's Apple Store joke. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> Why can't you pass gas in the Apple Store? Because <laughs> they have no windows. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> oh, that was a stinker. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, I, I'm kind of a do-it-yourselfer. And I, I, you know, around the house, I, I replace my water heater, I paint, I hang trim, I do all kinds of stuff. And I just want you to know that people are usually shocked when they find out that I'm not a very good electrician. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. I know. I tried to set that one up a little better. <laughs> really was, good run up and then, you know. <laughs> it was lame, I know. <laughs> I, I didn't get sent any jokes this week, so I don't have any. I, I, uh, I'm wondering None? what happened to Rosetta. Did she send you any? I do your own research, man. Jeff's, Jeff's got another one. Go ahead, Jeff. No, no, I don't. I don't. I had two, and but oh. I, I researched. I was prepared. I don't. I don't rely on somebody <laughs> sending because nobody sends me yeah, any. Well, you're only supposed <laughs> to have. We're only supposed to have one joke technically. Then, then we like to tell a few from our from our listeners. So <laughs> two, two yeah. is good. You did you did double duty there. That was nice. Well, I because I, I, technically I'm also a listener, so that, mm. that's that's why. That is Yay. awesome. Thank you. That that's one. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> one. Of, one of the seven. <laughs> One of the seven. Well, you know, speaking of <laughs> listeners, I, I got a lot of comments about last week's podcast. Did you people? We, we what had did a little, we do? We had a little technical difficulty there. We ended the podcast and we all said goodbye. And at Michael, this was not on purpose. He he did not close the podcast. He just let us keep going. So there was another fifteen minutes of us rambling about absolutely nothing. <laughs> I and hope it was absolutely nothing. Did was, I say anything was, I shouldn't have? No, it, no one said anything bad. But the funny okay. thing was at the end, Mike's like, well, I really got to go. I got something to do. So he stops his audacity. And Rebecca says goodbye and stops her audacity. But the two of them are still online. I didn't stop my audacity. So I'm sitting there talking to literally like talking to myself, <laughs> having a conversation with these two. And the only person you can hear is me. And people are like, that was funnier than heck because you were just, it was like some dude walking down the street talking to himself. So we got great reviews on that. So if you haven't heard last week's podcast, please go listen to that. And enjoy because go, go listen to the last 15 minutes, please. Don't, don't listen to the rest of it. Just yeah, the last 15 minutes. Forget the rest of it. But it, it was really funny. It was an accident. And Mike was going to go cut it out but after listening to it there was nothing there that we, we didn't say anything we weren't like you know oh, picking on people or anything so it was it was nice <laughs> i got a tickle out of it <laughs> i'm saying i'm so uh, stupid at two and a half minutes three minutes i talked to myself <laughs> but, that, but you know i think you ought to do that every week just <laughs> yeah you know it, you it, you do it round robin that, mm -hmm. that somebody's mic gets left on while the other two gets turned off <laughs> and you just have this this rambling conversation <laughs> But, you know, there's, there's this dead silence, dead silence. Oh, no, cowboy hat. Dead silence, dead silence. And so, well, no, it's the clown rodeo. Dead silence, dead silence. You know, just, just yep. like the guy, the guy walking down the sidewalk. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. That was good. Rebecca, did you have one more joke for us? Did uh, I give you time I, to look I it up? I think I have another one from Rosetta, but and I don't think I've said this one before. Um, out of all the inventions in the last hundred years, the dry erase board is the probably the most remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's yep. I've heard that one. A little tip yep. for you. I'm going to get off on tangent. First, first real major tangent of the night. Wait, what? So we we you? can't have an episode. We cannot have an episode without a tangent. Found this out by accident. We had a we had a dry erase marker. This is at a company I used to work for a dry erase board and it had a you hit a button and the scanner would go across the board and then it had a paper printer and would print out whatever was on the board so you could keep your this has been many years ago keep your whatever you wrote someone uh -huh. accidentally wrote on the board with permanent marker uh -huh. do you know what works to get permanent marker off of a dry yeah. erase board yeah dry erase markers yeah you simply scribble over the lines and erase it and it works That's amazing Yes. So that now we've had our tangent for tonight. <laughs> yeah, my my students confuse my my uh, markers quite often. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can see. It. Well, well, anybody who it's puts fun. crayons in a glue gun, yeah, is going to have trouble. Yeah. Well, dis yeah. Distinguishing markers. <laughs> <laughs> what that doesn't work are you kidding i'm gonna have to go try that that sounds awesome <laughs> so 
So, Jeff, why don't and you tell is, us? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rebecca. Oh, I was going to say, and this is coming from the the small Rebecca child who used to hide behind our wood burn stove in the living room, melting marker or melting crayons down the back of our wood burn stove <laughs> because I, I thought the rainbow terrible. was so beautiful. It was so pretty, yeah. <laughs> oh, it that, was that amazing. <laughs> it smelled like crayons. Yeah, they were Crayola. They smell. smell good. Oh my god, yeah. they smell amazing. Okay. That's like one of the best smells. <laughs> no, okay, that's Jeff. awesome. Summer rain on hot asphalt. That's the best smell. But I'm gonna, Jeff. I'm gonna go. Uh, ahead yeah, okay. I'm gonna have you Fresh let all of our listeners know where they can find you, Jeff. We would love for people to know your uh, social media outlets. Okay. Um, well, you can find me right here tonight with the podcast, and hey. um, you find me in my shop in St. Louis if you happen to be close. Mm-hmm. But if you go on Facebook, it's Jeff dot Hornung dot one. I believe is my Facebook Jeff Hornung dot one. There's it's Jeff Hornung. Just look for me there. And um, if you need wood woodworking wood turning supplies you can go over to the walnutlog.com if you want to see my artwork it's jeffhornung.com i've got some stuff out there uh bulls art pieces i'm getting my uh, ornament stock back up again uh instagram at the walnut log studio and uh, twitter i really don't tweet so Mm -hmm. kind of pointless there don't worry about twitter (laughs) all right rebecca how about you let's hear your social media outlets well, you can find me everywhere. <laughs> you can find me <laughs> at YouTube and YouTube. What did what did Mike do? Oh, it's still <laughs> up in the two two places. Wait, Facebook wait, wait, wait. You mean as... you have to look at a cheat sheet that Michael made to give where no, you're on social media? I just have to look at the show notes <laughs> and it's split oh. between two pages right now. I was like, wait, where was the other half of that one? <laughs> <laughs> All right, because let's make this section everywhere. even longer. <laughs> Facebook and YouTube, Rebecca De Groot. Uh, a second YouTube that I haven't posted very much to yet. Rebecca's up to something. Instagram, Rebecca underscore De Groot. Website, www.rebeccadegroot.com. Etsy, Rebecca De Groot Studio with no spaces. Redbubble, Rebecca De Groot Studio with spaces. And that is it. And I will be posting my gnomes on Etsy if I have any more left after the next couple days. Excellent. Otherwise, Excellent. just contact <clears throat> me and ask me if I have any more gnomes, and I will show you the turntable as they spin of what All I have right. left and what their prices are. My my list is a little shorter than uh, everybody else's. You can find me on YouTube at RJB Woodturner, also on Instagram at RJB Woodturner. And my uh, vlog channel, my shop vlog channel at What You Doing Bob. So that's pretty much my list. Jeff, I would like to say a, a, a deep hearted thank you. I truly appreciate you stepping up tonight at the last minute, yeah. literally last minute, and stepping in for Michael. Uh, you are a much hey. better host than Michael, and uh, we just <laughs> loved having you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll go with that one. We'll go with that. We'll see what kind of instant messages I get later on. I was like, hey, I heard what you guys said on the thing. <laughs> no, absolutely happy to be here. I really enjoy hanging out with you guys. Uh, thank you for thinking about me and, and having me come in. Um, I'm pretty sure Rebecca did it because she knows that I'm already set up technology wise. <laughs> didn't need a lot of that helps. I didn't that need helps. a lot of hand holding at the beginning. Uh, so <laughs> Like, who can we get that's going to know what they're doing, kind of, without too much assistance? Let's get Jeff, yeah. He's a terrible guest. You're you're assuming that we know what we're doing. Okay? Don't. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Jeff. Yes. And Rebecca, thank you tonight for joining us. It's always great having you on the show, even though you're a a weekly staple. It's wonderful. I'm I'm actually the only one that's been here every week. (laughs) You know, I don't think you've missed a week now that you mentioned that. I have not. Oh, my God. And you're the one that has the busiest schedule. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. See, this is what I need. This is what I need in my life. I need to schedule stress, every moment stress. of my life. <laughs> I, I think I think I would have made more shows, uh, you know, but we, we, we had some family things going on there. And Michael has some uh, personal thing, not personal, personal, but personal business things going on. So he couldn't make it tonight. But uh, mm-hmm. it's always great to have uh, have somebody that can kind of step in and help and and. Jeff's been wonderful. We we use Holly uh, Fry sometimes, and she's wonderful as as a guest host. And I I truly appreciate 
people willing to step up and help out. And once again, that says a lot for the community that we're in. So Mm -hmm. that's all I got, guys. Anybody got anything to add at the last moment here? Um, Not really, other than if you like the podcast, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell your grandma who is (laughs) bored as heck right now in the quarantine because a lot of states are shutting back down again and they need something else to do. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Sign off when I was a DJ, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, but don't tell your mama because she just can't handle it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. (laughs) Well, thank you everybody for joining us for another episode of you made that the podcast all about makers making and the things we make. Hey, I think that was better than at the beginning. Michael, could you just dub that in for me? You guys have have a great evening. We we, we love having you with us. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Okay, now, is this where we do the leave the microphone thing on? (laughs) 